Aloha and welcome to a League of Extraordinary Couples. Today you're in for a real treat because I don't know if you can sense it from me, but this is a dream come true for me. Today I have the great good fortune of interviewing the founders of Amago. This is Harvel Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt. And these two people came into my life at a time where I needed more. I needed to go deeper in my work with clients and I needed to go deeper in my relationship with my beloved. And it was a match made in heaven. So for many, many moons now, I have been following them and practicing these great um, inspirations in terms of the Imago theory, the Imago relationship um, toolkit, and uh, just can't say enough about them. So they're joining us from their Dallas, Texas location. Please say hello to our audience. Hello, we're glad to be here. And thank you, Amy, for having us on. Lovely to be here. It's lovely to see you. Yes, thank you, thank you. So I am going to start our interview with the, the big, broad picture of if you were to, to describe your personal relationship as a landscape, how would you describe it? Mm, we just were given the question, what, four or five minutes ago, <laughs> and uh, immediately I saw a dark forest. <coughs> um, oh. I, I saw a dark forest, uh, it was painted by a Rembrandt or Monk, the painter who painted the scream. Um, and let's see, I'm going to try and to put in another painter there because um, the thing about it is it's so filled with life. It's just pregnant with the bark and the leaves and the ants and the owls and the branches and the birds and little worms. I mean, it's got everything. Just, it's just so wonderful. There's still a lot you don't know about the relationship. And that's to me, the wonder and beauty that we have been together. How many years have we been married? 38. How long have we known each other? 43. 43 years. Uh, this last weekend, we presented at Esalen. And there was an exercise and I said, Harville, why don't we do that exercise? We both talked for hours about, it was a childhood wound and need said together. And mm -hmm. it, we spent hours learning mm -hmm. new things about each other. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the, so your image is the dark forest um, with all kinds of, but it's, but it's full of life and full of vitality. I was thinking that- um, And shadows. And shadows and so forth. <laughs> That it was the dark forest way it started in the dark forest and then the light came and you could begin to see stuff so i uh, but, but uh, your artistic background you're interested in paintings uh, really i would never have started there with that, I, I, with that yeah. kind of a picture so what was i couldn't yours? have done that uh, well it wasn't formed um okay. but it but it feels expansive um uh, like a plane okay. uh, and uh, and i have a wanderer instinct so yeah and you're a nester, so it would be interesting that we would do that. But it's a big plain with rolling hills, and there's always a, a horizon and a, a, next, uh, a next stop of the journey uh, with anticipation and surprise. You know, like right now, we thought we were kind of done a few years ago, <laughs> uh, and we're now in a project bigger than anything we've ever done because we decided to take on the planet and teach the whole planet how to have safe conversations. And yeah. so who knew 10 years ago, we would be engaged in a project of this magnitude and this much success with the same energy that came with Imago Couples Therapy. So it's a plain rolling undulating hills, just over the hill is some un un undiscovered um, something. Yeah. yeah. I love the creative descriptions. They both feel pregnant with potential and possibilities. And Helen, when you were describing yours, it reminded me of what I'm learning here in Hawaii of, we call it kapo, the darkness, the creative energy from which all comes. And, and then that just over the other hill, there's, there's this greater vista, greater projects, greater offering. And I just want to inform our audience in case they don't know that I am indebted to both of you for the phrase, saving the planet one relationship at a time. And I just... That gives me what we call here chicken skin. It's chills all over. It's just the inspiration. And that's why I'm fired up to, um, to learn more about your personal relationship. So in that vein, 
what matters most? If you were to distill everything that's important, and I know there's a lot there, if you distilled it down to just its essence, just one thing, how would you each respond to that? Well, I think what matters most um, for me is, um, is what has emerged as a sense of partnership that we are, because we, we started off in opposition long ago, and we were a, a pretty much competitive opponents. Um, and for a long time, what has emerged, I think, that makes our relationship um, special is is a is a sense of um, co co creation, collaboration, co creation. Uh, that we are partners on the project of our relationship as well as partners in the project in the world. I think that that would, would be, it goes with partners we're both committed uh, to co-create an outcome rather than that's uh, that's a win-win for both of us rather than that's focused on me getting more and Helen getting less or, or whatever that it's uh, an equity there's an mm -hmm. equity uh, in the relationship. Um, that's what comes up for me is a partnership. Great, thank you. What came up for me with the question is a quick repair. And mm -hmm. um, in um, committing to our relationship in a new way after we were thinking about divorcing um, right before the turn of the century, uh, we brought in the idea of zero negativity and if there's negativity in the space between, one of us says, ouch, or being, or we, we, we say marshmallow, or some sign that there's something negative. And we, there are different ways to repair, and one is a quick repair. And Harville will tell our couples these days that when we used to have a rupture, it would take two, three weeks for the repair to happen. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to wallow in the pain. <laughs> really, really feel it and enjoy my anger. And he would say, it takes me a while to get over it. Don't even try to communicate. It just takes me a while. My, my system doesn't come back online, and I have to recover according to my body. And I was over it, but I just waited. Mm -hmm. But now um, we do quick repairs. Well, yeah, I mean, and we we, yeah. we we don't let ruptures happen. And yeah. it's so neat. Yeah. That and and the repairs are pretty instantaneous, <laughs> like right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they're if they're not instantaneous, they're probably within mm -hmm. five or ten minutes. Uh, that one mm -hmm. of us will say, "Hey, let's let's redo that. Uh, let's mm -hmm. uh, figure this out." And, and the reason uh, has to do purely with the fact that it's too painful to be disconnected. Right. It's not like, oh, we should get repaired uh, and follow the script. It's like, um, I can't tolerate the disconnect. Whereas years ago, the disconnect was what was chronic. So mm -hmm. a, a disconnect was uh, in, in some ways more comfortable than being mm -hmm. connected because connected <clears throat> always had the danger of being disconnected. Right. But once we got through that impasse and connecting became uh, pretty chronic, we know that that's how, that's how it should be. It's, it's mm -hmm. not like theologically or spiritually, but that's how it is by nature. Mm -hmm. Connecting is nature and it's us experiencing that. And when we're, so we're out of sync with the whole universe when we're out of sync with each other. And that's really painful. So right. the quickness, I'm glad you brought that up because the quickness of repair uh, is, the, is the technological way that uh, that that's so extraordinary. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I love that you two are still in this conversation, even during the interview, and you're directing your energy toward each other. That is such a refreshing thing to bear witness to. And when I've done these interviews in the past, my Power and Partnership series, I did a dialogue with each interviewer, and the interview went on and on and on as I mirrored and reflected and went on and. I love that with the two of you, I don't even need to do that. You're doing that for each other. And there's just um, a real lightness to that. So I want to say thank you for that. I hear the importance of repair, that quick repair. I also heard some 
some code words in there from you, Helen, like, uh, ouch, you know, and I, I've taken that. I'll even put my hand to my heart like, ooh, there's something right here that just doesn't feel right. And as you're saying, Harville, just the importance of, of doing it because it feels good and it ripples out and then it has that positive influence on the greater greater scope of things. Am I getting you both? Absolutely both. And, and we think the ripple out is something beyond psychology, beyond our energy field. Yeah. Somehow we're connected, we think, to the quantum field. Yeah. Uh, and that that's a real connection. And so you're not just experiencing a little rupture here. The right. whole universe we are uh, disconnected from. So right. that, that's a very important uh, situation. I would love, with your permission, to dive there just for a moment. I know I'm trying to keep to our script here, but do you believe that when the ruptures happen out there, they can affect the space between two people? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think so. That, that, uh, in fact, I've just been uh, perusing a mind-blowing book that talks about social networks and that you can be in a social network, which is, which is chaotic, and it will begin to erode your own connection. Yeah. So have to be aware that not everything is interpersonal right. uh, in, the, in the dyadic sense, but is but it is interpersonal in a social network sense. In fact, our definition of the rupture is that it happens in the space between. Right. When there's anxiety, um, the connecting ruptures. That when it's safe, we connect. Right. And at the moment, there's any anxiety. Question, you know, serious question or put you, anything that puts you on guard or puts you down, the rupture has happened between you. Yeah. Right. And, it, and you have to then bring safety into the between to heal. Right. I love that. And I, this dovetails on what Harville was saying. The most important thing, what matters most for him is that sense of partnership, the co-creation of the space between. And so you're both discussing that, which segues into our next question, which is when negativity does happen, what are the specific tools that you could offer that you use to help dissolve that negativity to deal with the conflict when it comes up? I know you have the zero negativity aim, but when it does come up, you mentioned a couple already, is there more you could elaborate on? So, so I'll pick up on that. Okay, or I'm happy to. to why don't you go ahead and, okay. and I'll say something um, if I need to. <clears throat> for me, the most important thing a couple can learn to do is ask for what they want it, with um, ask in a way that their partner will hear it mm -hmm. which means um, in our Imago language Wendy Palmer Patterson came up with the phrase send a responsibility mm -hmm. you ask for what you want with a kind look in your eye kind tone of voice and you're succinct mm -hmm. and mm. you say it you, you think, figure out ways to say it make the request in a way your partner would be most likely to act on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that is a great art for a successful couplehood. And um, so when a rupture happens, you can focus on the rupture or um, what needs to happen to so that it wouldn't have ha happened had mm -hmm. you done nothing before what was needed either before to keep the rupture from happening or that it's ruptured, what, what needs to happen now? Mm -hmm. Just <clears throat> no shame, blame, or criticism. Right. Like, do not go there because that only deepens the rupture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think the, the uh, thing I would add to what you're saying is um, the, the mirroring process, which you were, Amy were talking about, mm -hmm. is to the, when there is a conflict, that if you will go back and say, let's redo that, let's yeah. start that over. Or uh, if one person, like this morning, we had a little rupture in terms of I hadn't mirrored you accurately or at all, and then not accurately. Um, and you go back and within a few minutes, when you do the mirror, then uh, it's like everything changes. And we know it's not just a nice thing to do, but when the mirror actually activates neurochemicals in the brain and moves you out of cortisol into endorphins. And it also uh, activates the mirror neuron network. And when that's activated, there's a sense of connecting and belonging. And we now know the brain, the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex get in sync so mm -hmm. that you have a 
better brain integration with simple act of mirroring. Mm -hmm. But you have to stop and say, I, let me mirror this. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mirror that. <clears throat> and when that happens, it was interesting how quickly we moved from that a rupture this morning about that simply because we stopped and mirrored. Yeah. I love that you two can demonstrate this, that you're not perfect. You don't have it all like lofty, you know, floating above the earth on this spiritual plane of never hurting each other's feelings or having that rupture, but you're willing to take in the other's reality. And that's what I even just saw right there. As soon as you referenced this morning, Harville, Helen's face just lit up like, yeah, you remember? And we got through that. And I could just, it's palpable, that sweetness of repair, of tending to. And what I also witness is when we go into the explanation and the theory and the words and all that, that's where I want to hang out. It feels very safe to me. And that's when I saw he Helen's brow get furrowed again, like, oh, we're going back in the theory. So for me, it's that constant going back and forth. And I just, I hope it's okay that I pointed that out because I do that all the time. So my little, you know, I do this for ouch and I try to do this to, okay, how do I drop down here? Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So yeah. You're prefrontal cortex and exactly and getting rid of all the furrowed brow wrinkles because i really want to figure everything out with my magnifying mind but that doesn't get me where i want to go right? <laughs> right so i love the no shame no blame no criticism i use that all the time it is religiously in my vernacular of helping couples it has helped so many people so thank you for putting that phrase on the planet i'm also reminded of that sense of relaxed pulsation, that joyful aliveness, that in-breath, out-breath, and, and you two demonstrate that. Just I see it in the space between. So is there something you'd like to say about that? Well, I think uh, I had something and then I lost it, but um, it ha having to do with um, the, the uh, zero negativity, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what it was, that it, we used to do that and we started doing that as a kind of cleanup act. Um, you know, stop the negativity. But to go back to theory, it finally became clear that love and negativity are incompatible. Ah. So it's not like you should not be negative. It's like you want to be loving, mm -hmm. be negative. This mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't talk about hard things, but you use the dialogue process to do that without mm -hmm. putting each other down. Mm. But, but love is being there with and for the other person. And you mm. can negate them and be there with them at the same time. Oh. It's a fundamental choice about yeah. where, where will you wind up with your partner, negating right. them or affirming them. Yeah. And love is affirmation. Mm. That is, that is uh, <laughs> soothing to my soul to hear. Um, I, I, I needed to hear that. And uh, thank you. I, I could say more, but I want to hear from you. Um, so where are we? The, the last is about deepening connection, you know, how, how to go in there and really deepen. Go for it, Helen. Love to hear from you. So the furred brow was, yeah. the, what was the fourth question? Oh, <laughs> oh ears, sorry. My ears okay. were happy, but I thought, oh, I'm going to completely forget there was a fourth question. And oh, no worries, honey. Yeah. Time. We've got a time bind too. So anyway, the fourth question I have an answer to or response. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, which is the caring behaviors. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take time, well, the answer to the question is for someone who wants to know how do you deepen your connection. If you're one of those people, the answer to the question is asking your partner what will deepen the connection. Ah. Like, listen, ask that question. You know, we, we have our own answers, but they may not be another couple's answers and if anyone is listening they can have the answer to the question if they ask their partner yeah and if their partner will ask them beautiful people let each other know what 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 feels um what could i do harville that makes you feel loved and cared about i, I we we have a good <clears throat> relationship things are fine but to deepen our connection, what could you tell me two or three things you'd like me to do to deepen our connection? Yeah. And if Harville asks me that question, it's like learning about little tiny things. Maybe it's a foot rub twice a week or some, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
music you like to listen to. You just don't have time to tell each other. Mm -hmm. Ask ask about uh, candles lit every other night before mm -hmm. you go to bed, or mm -hmm. just take the time to find out what would deepen the connection. Yeah, mm -hmm. to frame that. We found that curiosity uh, is the sexiest thing you can do with your partner. <laughs> uh, I want to know you. Uh, yeah. see what is going on with you. But it has to be curiosity without judgment. So if mm -hmm. you say, I want to know you, and then you uh, declare yourself, and the other person says, well, that sucks. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> not, uh, that, that, that's not sexy. Right. But I know that Helen, in the past, uh, uh, in, fa in fact, in the past couple of weeks, and last week, uh, you uh, asked me something about myself, and we were spent that uh, about an hour in a conversation of me downloading about that. Uh, and also there was another one in which you were sharing something about your past and your childhood, and we were talking about each other's woundedness. And I thought that, I felt a sense of connecting with you, with your sharing about what it was like for you to be a child, some material I had didn't know about, and, and you had told me about, I'd never heard about it, uh, that was really challenging material. So I think just this disclosure of yeah. being able to be vulnerable with sensitive material, knowing that if you're vulnerable, it's not, you, nobody's going to hit you. Right. Uh, you don't have right. to be defended. You can be right. vulnerable and safe. Because right. safety, uh, when we say zero negativity makes sense because you can't love and be negative, we would say safety is non-negotiable mm -hmm. in a thriving relationship because it can't be safe and dangerous at the same time. So right. you only have two choices. It's either safe or dangerous. Right. Pick, pick the one you want. Right. Uh, so I think deepening the connection has always been uh, uh, a, a kind of reflective sharing and, and a sense of um, uh, we can talk about anything without uh, exploding. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. I am just soaking this all in. I can't wait to watch it again <laughs> and take more notes. And my, um, my closing um, thank you to you is that my, my most recent statement is, I am a tender, powerful, generous woman. And you both, Helen, you just helped me to be more tender and generous by inquiring what my beloved Mark would want. And that sense of being powerful without being scary. So Harville, thank you for the reminder that I can, I can allow the space to feel safe or dangerous and that it really is up to me to help co-create that amazing reality. So many, many thanks. Mahalo nui loa, as we say here, great big thanks. And I wanna give you a moment to introduce um, people to uh, your offerings online and to remind people to get out there to get the next greatest edition of Getting the Love You Want. We're going to get it back on the New York Times bestseller. What'd you say for the 12th time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's available obviously on Amazon, but okay. our website is Harville and Helen, one word, dot com. Mm -hmm. there our schedule of workshops across the country is listed and other activities that we do. Yes. So and there are three free eBooks on there too. I highly recommend people to check those out as kind of a, a lead in a poo poo platter appetizer for the getting the love you want. So I forgot about that. So yes, we yeah. do have three uh, eBooks and also there's a link to a network of Imago therapists. So if people right. are looking for therapy or training in Imago therapy, they can get links from our website to the uh, therapist network. Great. Well, so wonderful to have you both on. I um, look forward to learning more and oh, so sweet, taking a picture with my mind's eye. Aloha and be well. Thank you, Amy.